I tend to do things maybe slightly differently than a lot of other people that, that you might see um, bow hunting in front of the camera. And, um, and I really believe in the system that I use. And I'm constantly bringing new gear in and flushing other gear out and trying new things. But um, a lot of the things that I have right here are things that have been in my kit for a long time. So there are some new pieces. And uh, I just kind of want to walk it through. So um, I want to start with what I wear for late season clothing. But I'll also wear versions of this stuff throughout the entire year. Um, silly to say, but I wear smart wool wool underwear basically every day of my life and um, I wear them hunting too I, I try not to wear any synthetics against my skin uh, unless I'm maybe on a on a crazy long sheep hunt or something like that where I want something that's going to be a little bit more fast drying but other than that I like wool against my skin and I wear I don't have a pair I have a pair on but I don't have a pair to show you but um, darn tough wool socks out of Vermont the only sock that I buy um, they're incredible. Literally the word darn and tough. Um, you can find them in most backpacking retailers and the awesome thing about the socks, well they're, they fit awesome. They're super warm and they uh, have a lifetime guarantee. So as soon as you get a hole in them, you tear them, whatever, send them back, they send you a brand new pair of socks. Uh, it's pretty much the only socks that I buy. Next layer against my skin, um, I'll have wool long underwear. This is minus 33. Uh, I have no affiliation to this company whatsoever, but uh, I just think it's really good. It's really soft. It's really warm. Uh, this is kind of like a mid-weight, I think, uh, that I wear right now. Um, but it's really super good. After that, I have wool long underwear, a little bit thicker wool long underwear. This is from a company called Il Frate. Uh, I discovered this stuff years ago when I was uh, buying my first few sets of King of the Mountain wool. They had it on the on their website, but you can find it under Euphralte if you want to go look. It's kind of expensive, but I've had this piece for, I don't know, 20 something years. And you can see it's, I have a couple of holes, but for the most part, it's money. Um, I found these pants and everything I say that I found, basically either somebody brought it to my attention. My director of photography, uh, William Altman, who's filming this, uh, I think he kind of sent me a link to these pants a few years ago. They're from L.L. Bean. These are probably the best cold weather pant I've ever worn in my life. And super, super economical to buy. I think they're $170. Wool on the outside. Prima loft on the inside. I've heard guys say that the Prima loft is really noisy. And as soon as they bought the pants, they cut the Prima loft out. I've had zero issues. I've never heard it. Never thought it was loud. Um, even when I've been sneaking up on whitetails on the ground. I have King of the Mountain bibs or um, suspenders on them. Uh, I just like hunting with suspenders and belts and stuff. But when I'm bulking up, I like suspenders. This thing is one of the best pieces I have. And, and you know, I'll do, I'll do some more of this stuff. Um, I get quite a lot of gear questions from people. And I love talking about gear because... When I was younger, I loved trying to figure out what worked for me, and I loved um, hearing from other people and what worked for them. And and uh, the, I, to me, there's no there's no uh, no replacement for experience and wisdom. And so I'm I'm always willing to listen to the guy next to me, and uh, whether he has more or less experience than I do, I I don't care. Um, I don't I don't follow the gear trend close enough to have my finger on the pulse. So I just try to find what works with me and and listen to other people. This is a sweater from Fjall Raven. And it's called the Lotta Sweater. I've worn this thing all over the world, in the mountains, whitetail hunting. Uh, and it's pretty amazing. And, and it's, it, it's funny to say this, but I'll literally wear like an Icebreaker t-shirt, the minus 33 top, a Euphrate top, or the sweater, and then maybe a vest. Like here I have a vest that I just acquired from um, King of the Mountain. Uh, a friend of mine, Mark Beck, found this on... on uh, on uh online used and bought it for me and, and uh of course he's gonna make me pay him back but still it was nice of him to run and go get it but uh, i just got it on this hunt this is the first time i've used it it'll be in my kit now for the rest of my life this is a a vest that is made by king of the mountain i think it's called a beaver tail vest because it hangs down i don't think they make it anymore but there are varieties like this um but that's basically all i'll wear up to like negative 30 
degrees. I've, I've hunted many times in just a few undershirts and a sweater uh, into some very cold temperatures. This is of course late season whitetails to where I'm only sitting like four or five hours, something like that. So it's not that bad. If it was in the middle of the season where I'm sitting dark to dark, I'd probably still be wearing the same thing, to be honest with you. Um, this is a little, I don't know if it's a secret. I don't know if it's not a secret. Every place I wear these things, people laugh at me. This is a Steger Mucklock from northern Minnesota. You can get them out of Ely. Steger. Um, this is a moose hide Mucklock, winter Mucklock. I think it's called the Quetico. If you have cold feet, you need to buy one of these. It's leather. It has a wool booty inside. It has kind of a rubberized sole. You spray them down to waterproof them. I wear this thing often. It's super quiet to walk in, almost like a moccasin. And your it feels like your feet are in a little plush little sleeping bag, little sock. Um, I don't get terribly cold feet, but I've worn these things in for very, very long days and negative temperatures for a very, very long time. And my feet have never, ever, ever been warmer. Like you see guys just doing a little dance on their stand. Not with these, these things are absolutely amazing. Um, the other boot that I wear is Hanbog. Um, if you follow our films at all, you know that they're an amazing full grain leather boot. I'm wearing one right now. This is not the one that I bow hunt in. This is called the Burglar but I usually wear the Cirrus 2 or uh, a Tatra top when I'm, when I'm wearing a leather boot and bow hunting. Um, one of the other biggest things in my kit are my optics. I get a lot of questions. Be beside the lot of sweater, probably the lot of sweater and my optics are probably the two things that I get asked about the most. Um, I use Maven built optics. Um, I use a B1 binocular. Uh, what are they? See, I'm not a, I'm not a 10 by 42s. And then I use this S1A spotting scope. And I get a lot of questions because these guys sell their, they design their gear and they sell their gear direct to consumer. So it's slightly less price point than Swarovski, Leica, Zeiss, which everyone equates with um, really premium glass. And I can't emphasize this enough. If I were a billionaire and could buy anything on the market, this is what I would buy. Um, these guys, it's just really, really good glass. It's super clear, super functional. I've only broke, I've broke one pair of binoculars um, as compared to when I was wearing Swarovski's, I would wear Swarovski ELs, and I think I broke five pairs in five years, or five pairs in four years, something like that. I've only broke one pair of binoculars, and um, and I think the pair that I broke, I may have run over with my truck, or they fell off a cliff. Um, I wasn't sure which pair it was that actually broke. And then the first time they ever sent me a spotting scope, and I've written about this before, but the very first time they sent me a spotting scope, we were in Australia and I just threw the scope in the back of the truck. I'm, I'm really hard on gear. And when I threw the scope in the back of the truck, a tire iron to change a tire, a tire um, wrench, lug nut wrench rubbed on the eyepiece the whole time we were driving. And so when we pulled back over to glass on Buffalo, there was literally like a, an etched hashtag mark in the middle. And I thought it was going to ruin the glass until I looked through it. And anyone that knows glass really well knows that your, your eye really doesn't pick that stuff up. It was still crystal clear. I used that scope for um, two or three more years. And then finally Maven reached out to me and said, will you please just send that? They had seen what I'd written about. They said, please send that scope back so we can get you a new eyepiece and, and send it back to you. And, and really what I had them do, this was super cool. But I had them, they replaced the eyepiece and then they sent it to a friend of mine in Oregon who's a police officer who's just a super badass dude and... Um, we love our police officers. So I had him send, send the scope. They cleaned it all up, fixed it, and they sent it to him in a brand new box and he was stoked. Um, so you'll see this stuff. And I use a Gitzo tripod for a couple of reasons. One, it's super light. Two, William Altman, who is our director of photography, told me to buy it and he studies this stuff all the time. And three, we can use it for filming if we need to. Like William can steal it from me and run a time-lapse off of it or steal it from me and use a second camera angle or whatever. 
Um, another thing that's been a mainstay, a lot of people ask me about this all the time. Why do I paint my face? Why do I, I mean, obviously some of this stuff is camouflage. I don't care about camouflage. I care about shadows and I care about not moving and I care about keeping the wind right. But I do paint my face because being somebody who's Caucasian and I used to hunt with this guy from Trinidad who is very, very, very dark skinned um, black man and he would paint his face. He would put grays and whites on his face to hide his face. Um, but this is the best camo that I've used. It's HS Hunters. Yeah, you can get this stuff anywhere, but it's literally like black, brown, and green. This is the best stuff that I've used. The reason I paint my face is because my face, our faces shine. So even though you're wearing something that's gray or tan or, you know, uh, a, um, a solid color, the animals will look right past that. They're used to seeing things that are a solid color like a puma or a mule deer or a white-tailed deer. They're not camouflaged. They're buff. They basically create a palette of their sides so that when they're slipping through stuff like this, the twigs and the branches kind of act as their camouflage. The shadows act as their camouflage. So the reason I touch my face up is so that if they're looking at me or looking up at me, looking down at me, looking straight across at me, they're not seeing this stark, shiny, white face. They're not seeing this white circle. So I want, I want to create shadows. And so I'm not sitting here trying to draw trees on my face, but I do some black here. I do some black on my forehead, black lines off my nose, black lines. I just want them when they look at me, it to look like there's twigs and shadows and, and, um, I'm kind of toying around with some face masks and stuff a little bit here and there when I'm doing ghillie suit hunting because I love ghillie suits. But I have issues when I shoot my bow with it snagging on my face mask. And so that's why I like to paint my face. So I'm not sitting there worrying about bringing something up or down when animals are close. I don't even have to worry about it. I just sit there. And, um, and so this is the one that I've found that that is the best. Um, okay. This is just a custom knife that a dear friend made for me, David Maple. It's just really, he forges these things out of, with his own bare hands and they're awesome. Um, he used to be a farrier, which is the guy that puts horseshoes on horses for Walt Disney for years. Now he started his own knife company. The other knife that I'm in love with is a Benchmade. Literally have one of these things on my hip uh, every day of the year. And I don't remember what this one's called, so, but it's super thin. I think it's one of their new ones. It's amazing. Um, moving on, some of the new things that I've discovered this year, or actually I'll go over my bow and then I'll show you some new, new stuff. But this is my bow for right now. There's a couple things I'm gonna change this year. It's a PSE Stealth Mach 1. Uh, I shoot for PSE right now. They're amazing. Um, even if they fire me tomorrow, which they might, I think their bows are incredible. Um, Awesome can systems. I love how they shoot. I love how they draw. Um, this is the stabilizer system I have right now. But I'll tell you, I just ordered stabilizers from Shrewd Archery. And I've just started playing around with them. I, I, I'm, I have to order one more piece to complete. I, I mistakenly didn't order the last piece. That's why it's not on my bow. But um, unbelievable construction. And unbelievable just like their design, functionality, the balance that I was finding really good um right now i'm using a spot hog um tommy hog i think it's called i used to use a hog father which is the long one but i switched to a tommy hog just to bring it bring it in close we're in the mountains a lot and i fall a lot and so i, I just try to like bring it in so i'm not smashing so with my sight out here i don't want to smash it and expose it so i'm trying to bring it in a little bit closer to my bow um you can see uh, here's the other thing that i use which i love Schaefer Performance Archery uh, Arrow Rest. I'll show you how this thing works. It's pretty cool. So it's a total capture rest. So you can literally pull down on the cord, hit this button, then let go of the cord and it stays, like your arrow stays. So if you're doing spot and stock, like arrow cannot come off totally cannot come off and if you want to open it you just pull in the cord and it opens back up yes it opens and gets out of the way no the arrow doesn't hit it um it's awesome it's an incredible rest it's rock solid 
This is the first time I've used it. Uh, John's been a friend of mine for years. Uh, it was really cool. Back when I was working as a biologist in Alaska, I would have my bow up in Alaska and super remote. And I'm not a bow technician. I don't really know how to work on a bow at all. But I would have issues with my bow, and then I'd call John, and and um, and he would he would link me up. So um, a couple of the other things on my bow. This is new. Well, you'll see I have this tape everywhere. This is a Lone Wolf Custom Gear tape. Love it. Love it. I called them. They sent me some. I called them back and said, send me all of it. I want it all. I literally want to tape my truck in this stuff. Here's a strip of it right here. This is. I think this is how it comes. This is how they sent it to me. I don't know if this is scraps. But it's textured. Almost feels like a fingerprint. It's very, very soft. It's very spongy in the feel. Like it's very warm on my grip. Makes things super, super quiet if they're bumping against things. So I have it on my tree stands, have it on my bow. Uh, the only thing it doesn't do is you can't stick it onto itself. So you, everything has to be a single application. But this stuff is incredible. This is um, Cody D'Aquisto and, and Andre sent me this stuff and uh, I'm completely blown away. I already want them to send me more. So you'll see it. I have it on my stabilizers. I have it on the front of my bow. I have it on my limb pockets. I have it on the back of my bow. Uh, basically everywhere. Um, I don't know a bow I'm going to shoot this year, but um, we'll figure it out. The other thing that I have on my bow that's relatively new that I've been using for the last couple weeks, this is from Total Peep. And I have no idea what they call this thing, but it's a bow holder and it is freaking awesome. So when you're sitting on stand, I have it on my, my Kuyu Bino harness. So literally it just fits. So you can have an arrow knocked and literally be glassing and just have your bow on your hip, right? So if you're seeing a big buck coming out or you're in a final push on a caribou and you, you need to assess something. Let's say you're going in on a caribou. Then all of a sudden you see a big grizzly bear is coming in on the same caribou that you're coming in on or a pack of wolves or something and you need to reassess. You know, and you, you have an arrow knocked or whatever. You don't want to set your bow on the ground is clunky literally set it on your harness. You can also put it on your belt. There's, you can also put these on, you know, these attachments on your backpack, pick up your binos. You can assess things range. You, your hands free, but your arrows knocked, your bow's ready. And then literally you just lift off. There's no weight on it. So it's a little, you know, literally just bump it with your thumb and it comes right off. It's so cool. Really cool. I just, I love stuff that's functional like that. It's really important to how I hunt. Um, I like things that are really seamless like that. Um, this is the other probably biggest find of the year for me. And I was introduced it this year. I was using, um, iron will outfitter broadheads, uh, that bill makes. They are deadly, 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 deadly. Um, I've, you know, I just can't say enough about them. Like they hit like a jackhammer. Uh, everything I shot died super fast. Um, but more importantly, as I was talking to Bill about arrow setup, he's kind of asked me what my arrow weight is, what my spine is. And you guys know for years I've used really, really heavy arrows. And, um, and they worked great for me, but I needed to learn more. I needed to learn about energies and I need to learn about flight and I need to learn about impact and penetration. And I was just trying to educate myself and, and Bill said, do you, do you know Kyle Davidson by chance of, of, um, DCA custom arrows? And I said, I don't. He said, Oh, I need to introduce you to my friend, Kyle. I can't, I can't overemphasize this enough. I think every single archer aside from maybe a couple of the world champions or a couple of the top top level pros i think every archer in the world deserves to have kyle build you a set of arrows so what kyle does is he'll call you you'll call him and he'll ask you a bunch of questions about your bow you know axle axle height draw weight your draw length um what you're looking for for performance what you hunt how you hunt and he'll put everything together and build you the best arrow for your bow and for your hunting. And I know that sounds like, ah, arrows are arrows. No, this guy, and, and he's not doing this from his gut. This isn't a gut feeling. 
He's backing everything with science. He's building you the quietest arrow that he can build you because he has the equipment to test the sound and he'll put different veins on and he'll test um, what veins are making the most noise and how the weight is affecting flight. And so he built these arrows for me. They're an Easton Axis um, match grade. And, um, and then Bill makes some of these. He licenses some components from Deep Six, also from Easton. And then he puts them in, um, I think, in titanium and some other alloys that are a little bit stronger, lighter. Um, but I can't, I can't overemphasize this enough. They're a, a little, they might seem a little bit expensive um, to the average guy when he calls and asks Kyle. But I'm telling you, find him on Instagram, DCA Custom Arrows, and call him and spend the money. I'm not kidding you. You'll never shoot better. It, 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 for me, the confidence of knowing that the projectile that's coming out of my bow is proven through mathematics, through performance, through sound, flight. Uh, it's just incredible. I can't, I can't overemphasize. Uh, literally, I hope I never shoot another arrow again that he hasn't built. Um, super stoked. Um, which leads me to my weird little backpack. I get a fair amount of questions about this backpack when I use it. It's not my favorite backpack in the world, but it's pretty darn good. And I just use it for kind of tree stand hunting, going to and, and from the tree stand. Um, and then I like the ability, basically what this is, this is from a company called Bison Gear. I don't think they're in business anymore. But I basically had them take a backpack that was already on the market and build me one out of wool. And I want to do more of this. I want to find, and I was thinking about asking if a couple of the backpacking companies out there now, if I showed them some backpack stuff that I like or one that I want, if they'd build it to me out of wool. But this is basically how this one works. It has a little pocket right here, which has my releases in it. A couple of different releases, I think. Yeah. Has that, and then um, has my arrows right here. So like, as I have it adjusted, like if I'm going, walking with my bow, I can literally clip, click an arrow out, put it on my bow, and shoot without removing my pack. And I can go through the woods relatively quiet with it on it like this. Like I said, it's not my favorite pack. It doesn't really handle weight. It's kind of when you're going bare bones, um, if you put a lot of weight in it, it starts to kind of pull at you a little bit. But um, that's that. Uh, releases I use, I'm a weird duck because I went through target panic. But And these aren't my only two. Actually, the release that I've used the most in the last 10 years has been the um, Carter Honey 2 uh, hinge release. And I love that release. Um, but I, I, I have it at home right now. I, I, need to, I need to take it apart and clean it. Um, but I have Dudley's new... I don't know what he calls it. It's the second generation silverback breakthrough release. Thing is awesome. I also have the knock to it, which is the thumb button one. It's in the truck. And then if I do want to shoot a, uh, a wrist strap release, which sometimes if I know I'm going to be taking longer shots, this is the type of thing that I want to shoot. Although I can shoot a caliper release with long shots with how I shoot it. Um, And I'll show you how I do that a little bit. But when I shoot a caliper release, you'll see a lot of guys floating up here. We've all seen it, guys smashing the trigger. But just like, and I had to be taught this from some friends that are much better shots than I am. But when I shoot it, I have my, my finger wrapped all the way around the trigger. I'm back here and I just pull back and the bow goes off. I never, um, I shouldn't say never, I guess maybe occasionally at an animal I'll purposefully pull my trigger, like if I have a big buck right here, or I have a big buck that is going through a gap, and I, you know, meh, shoot it. But by and large, 99.9% .9 of the arrows that I shoot are a total surprise to me, even at an animal. So I'm coming to full draw, I'm aiming, it just pull, 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 pop, goes off. And you'd be amazed. When you start shooting a surprise release, you start smashing bullseyes, and all of a sudden you're like, shooting 80 yards, 90 yards, 100 yards. I'm not necessarily saying an animal, but targets. And all of a sudden you're, you're like, how in the world am I getting bullseyes at 100 yards? And it's because your mind is better than you at aiming. 
And so if, you, if you're just floating that pin on your target and you're pulling through and you make this subconscious, and I think most of you guys probably know this by now, but you're just pull, pull, and you're just sitting there making that wiggle as small as goes off. As long as you have great follow through and you just chill out and let your arrow do its thing, it's incredible what your mind can achieve. Um, I'm gonna put these back in because that's how you forget releases. Um, Reinhardt Target, I take one of these things everywhere I go. This isn't my preferred one, although this is the one I take when I'm whitetail hunting. This, I think they call it an 18 and one. But I really love, they have a little ball. I have no idea what it's called, but it's a little flat bottom ball has sand in it and I cut the bottom out and I drain all the sand out to make it lighter because I usually travel with that on the airplane um, but I left it last year in Alaska on the Alaska Peninsula in a in the in the float of a, a float plane a buddy of mine's got it right now so I have to get it back but the little Reinhardt targets and you know their 3d targets everything's really amazing with that um, these two products right here pieces of gear whatever you want to say I don't really like the word products as silly as that is these are new to me and literally life-changing. Cody D'Aquisto from the original Lone Wolf and his father Andre, uh, they now started Lone Wolf Custom Gear and they have made these machined, I don't even know how they make them, but you know, these cast um, stands, cast sticks that fit in, the system fits together. You have backpack straps. So literally you have a stand and four sticks, extenders, I have all of my, I have a Kafaru little pouch on the bottom and I'm just getting to learn this system. So this is going to develop as I go. I don't even have this thing covered in tape yet. The Lone Wolf tape, which I will. But I can basically get as high as I want to get for the most part with these four sticks. This stand on my back. But Cody's been kind of teaching me this system <clears throat> or recommending this system, which I have fallen in love with because I like to hunt on the ground a lot. I like sneaking in getting into a bush, having a ghillie suit on, and just posting up. But Cody has kind of been teaching me that he's getting on these bucks really low in trees, and I love it. Like, he's finding cover that is just one or two sticks up. He's like 8 to 10 feet off the ground. I say 6 to 10 feet off the ground, or 6 to 12 feet off the ground. And he's just posting up on these trails. He's hunting, um, he's hunting sign. He doesn't use trail cameras, which um, is something that I've been threatening to do for a very long time and I use trail cameras very very little uh, I'm, I'm much more the guy that sets trail cameras out to kind of see how the season develops and I'll check them at the end of the season or in the middle of the season or whatever but I like hunting sign as well and I like to just kind of let the woods develop I, I like to let them breathe I let I like to see the animals doing natural movements and uh, and those are the things I like to hunt I don't I don't like to chase images on a trail camera because it's it's um for me, it's oftentimes an, uh, an empty space, but I cannot recommend this tree stand and stick system enough. It's 100% the best tree stand system I've ever used. I'll never not use it again. I have some XOPs um, and some XOP sticks um, that I use on some established um, stand sites that I have on, on different properties that I hunt, uh, which are amazing. They're, they're uh, similar to the original Lone Wolf, only better. And then these are just unbelievable it's like the ferrari and they are expensive i think this system's like 500 bucks or 550 bucks but you don't need to buy 10 of them right you just buy one or maybe two of them and um and then you're running and gunning you're super seamless have these bolt systems that keep the sticks on there that really quiet to get off the rubberized grommets they fit on the tree really well incredible system and the last thing i'll cover right now and I'll, i, I want to do more of these things because i'm always finding different clicks in my gear and and uh, different things that I love to use but I know this is going to seem very lone wolfy with the tape the stands and uh, their their trail camera but um, this trail camera is hands down the best trail camera I've ever used uh, it's not a cellular camera I know everyone is bananas for cell cameras right now but I don't know about that um, I have some opinions on it um, that I'll very likely keep to myself, take to my grave. But this trail camera, I'm going to get a bunch of these from Cody. I want to set them out throughout my properties and leave them for the year. Actually, just over this hill, uh, William and I just set one up on a beaver house because we want to get videos of the beaver coming in and out of his house and eating bark. 
And uh, I know that sounds ridiculous to most people, but to us, that's pretty much why we hunt. Uh, but this camera, super, super adjustable, has a rubberized outside. Obviously it's tree bark looking. The images, uh, I always have it on video. The video quality is unbelievable. It's a wide angle lens and you can actually switch that with your phone. But you attach this thing to a tree, it connects to your phone, which is the only thing that I, I love about it and I don't love about it is because then you have your cell phone with you, which these things are poison. But let's throw that aside. You attach this to a tree, it connects to your phone via the Wi-Fi. They talk to one another through Bluetooth, I think it is. And then you can see the image on your phone. So you put it on a tree, you're literally on your phone looking. You can see everything that the camera is going to see before you leave. You see exactly what the image is going to be. You change all the settings on your phone and then you just get this thing rocking and rolling. And battery life is awesome. Um, obviously regular SD cards. Um, and uh, I, I just have fallen in love with this camera. The image quality. Um, I have not had deer. I think a lot of cameras are like this though, but I've not had deer pay any attention to it whatsoever. But I really love the video quality. I've not seen video quality like this from a camera. And I love the wide angle lens. You actually get to kind of see the deer moving, see how they're going through the piece of territory. And um, I'm essentially getting rid of all my other trail cameras and going to all these guys. And this next year, I haven't totally made this commitment yet to myself. And I'm not doing this for any publicity. I'm not doing this to convince someone else that needs to do this. But next year, one of the things I want to do that I've been thinking about doing, and, and I say this because it's easier said than done because you start to get really curious in your mind. But one of the things I want to do is just set all my trail cameras out in, a, in early summer um, or spring and then I, not check them until that next year and start to learn some of my properties and put them in you know, different bottlenecks, different travel routes and... Um, and, and just try to try to get the nat natural flow of the property and and, uh, and the movement of the deer and other wildlife like like obviously watching the beavers and stuff. But I think this trail camera costs maybe a hundred dollars or one hundred and fifty dollars, something like that. Um, I, I can't recommend them enough. I, like I said, I know everyone is crazy about cellular cameras right now, but the value of this thing and the intrinsic value of using this camera and not having pictures sent to your phone. Uh, for me is, is true soul food. Um, this is basically my kit right now. It, it, it'll change a little bit. I have a few more pieces of King of the Mountain than I have laying here. I have more pieces that I use from Fjall Raven early in the season, some lighter sweaters. Um, Fjall Raven makes a, a pair of pants called Keb, Keb Pro trousers that I use a lot that are amazing. This is an old Patagonia cashmere sweater. Um, that I used to wear to like family Christmas. That is one of my favorite bow hunting pieces. I know it doesn't have elbows. Um, but everything here I swear by. The optics, um, Kyle Davidson DCA custom arrows, the lone wolf gear, my releases. I think John Dudley's been amazing to help people get over target panic. He just came out with his new wrist strap release called the back strap, which I've already ordered one. I don't necessarily, I'm not necessarily gonna use it for me. But I think every single beginner should learn how to shoot a boat like that. So, yeah, that's it for right now. I'm going to head home and uh, do some work with Sick Mads for the next three days. And then I'll be back here on Friday to close up the last three days of the season.